Should we be worried that USC is about to make people mad? You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Holkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day. Whether you're watching this show on YouTube or wherever you want to download your podcast, always remember this show is free and never forget how much I appreciate your support. Now, some of you watching, listening, you were fortunate enough to uh, experience the Pete Carroll era at USC. Really special time. Uh, in fact, some of you may have even uh, stood in those long, hot summer lines trying to get inside, watch football practices back when they were open to the public. Well, back then, you had fans, you had former players. They mingled amongst each other regularly. That was just part of That's how it was. And then occasionally, a celebrity, they'd kind of trip on through, walk through Goo Gate. Everybody would turn their heads and go, ooh, look who's here. That Again, that was just the standard fare. Day-to-day basis, you never knew who was going to show up at a USC football practice. Well, USC's spring practice number eight, uh, it was a lot like the old days. Former players were hanging out. You had Taj Washington was out there. Uh, there were more recruits than you could shake a stick at. Uh, I know that's kind of a corny thing to say, but literally, um, there must have been over 100 recruits, close to 100 recruits, watching USC's spring practice on Thursday. And when you when you bring that many people in, you need to entertain. So you bring in the stars, right? Of course. You bring in people like, I don't know, rapper Travis Scott, basketball superstar Juju Watkins, the owner, founder of Fanatics uh, Sportswear, Michael Rubin. Those are the people who are hanging out at USC's practice on Thursday. Yeah. So Travis Scott, he was on campus to launch a collaboration between his Cactus Jack clothing line. Uh, The manufacturer happens to be Fanatics, and they've signed an agreement with USC. So the bookstore was uh, was a place to be if you weren't at football practice. Uh, Now, when Coach Riley uh, met with the media scrum after practice, um, he, you know, basically before he came to us, he had, he introduced, uh, Travis Scott to the football team. Um, and then when he came and met the media, you know, it's like, Hey, you know, it's just another day at USC. And I'm thinking, you know, he, he's right. Seriously. One day it's Aaron Donald. The next day you got Travis Scott. I mean, talk about <laughs> a perfect day to have nearly a hundred plus recruits hanging out on your sidelines. This is primarily why everybody wanted the NCAA to hammer USC. When the the NCAA came after USC because of the whole Reggie Bush thing, this is what they were coming after. They're like, USC just has too many unique advantages. It makes it too hard to compete uh, when you're trying to recruit to places like Alabama and you've got to pay players under the table. Or help them get a Dodge Charger above the table. USC, you know, they don't have to compete with that. They can just say, hey, you know what? We got NIL. We got the transfer portal now. Bags of cash are nice. You can go get that everywhere. But, you know, you can get that, you know, if you're good enough, you can get that at USC. But at USC, anybody can drop by on any given day. I mean, think about recruits that were showing up today. Just, I'm just, I, I can't name them all because there's just too many. But you had Dijon Lee, the cornerback from Mission Viejo. You had another cornerback from Centennial High School, LaRue Zamorona. I mean, these are top targets. Uh, and the other thing, both of those guys passed the uh, six foot two inch prerequisite. So um, they were get, they got to check out practice. And I'll, I'll get to the. USC's practice in the second segment. Look, it's spring break right now in Southern California for a lot of the uh, local high schools. So the recruits are showing up. The sidelines are packed. Um, And again, like I said, there's way too many to name. Uh, 
A couple other though, get out of the way. Cody Green, defensive lineman who just transferred to modern day. He was he definitely stood out above above everybody else. Uh, there was a guy, young man there from the class of 2026, Madden Reardon. Again, another top target that USC is looking at. You know, what was it? Last week I told you about uh, modern day's um, legendary coach, Bruce Rollinson, hanging out at USC. This week, well, you had the other powerhouse program in Southern California, St. John Bosco. Uh, so they had some coaches there. They brought some players along. They probably saw Marcellus Williams getting some practice time in. Giant Skills had a huge presence. Uh, Giant Skills is one of the local, um, they're not seven on seven. They would, I would, I, I would classify them in the five on five. If you want, if you've got a young man who's looking to be a, an offensive lineman, defensive lineman, that's a really good group to send him to. Uh, Mason Murphy got his training there. Mason Graham did his off-season training there. USC got one of them. USC should have had both of them. Just saying. Here's the thing. Here's the point I'm trying. I'm driving at right now. When USC is winning, and they're having fun at practice, and the recruits are showing up, it's an impossible machine to stop. Okay. Right now, USC is kind of showing up in a new car. They've got their new clothes. Got a new attitude, new competent attitude. Everyone started to take notice. Well, look at USC. They got all this new stuff. And they're thinking, oh, crap. USC got all that new stuff. And they've got some pretty cool tools at their disposal, like name, image, and likeness. The transfer portal. That good vibe for USC at practice is great for USC. It's not great for everyone else. So again, you're starting to get that, that fun feeling. And it's not even fall camp yet. This is just spring. So everybody's starting to show up. They're starting to notice, ooh, that's how USC used to do it. Back when Pete Carroll was around. The recruits were showing up. And then all of a sudden, USC started winning. And those recruits started committing. And those commits started helping US win. USC win. And then celebrities, former players. It was just, you know, it was a vicious cycle. It was a vicious cycle for everybody not named USC. It was a great cycle for USC. And it's starting to feel like that vibe is coming back again. Like I said, great coaching staff, second to no one. You already see where USC's recruiting class is so far. Number three in the nation. And there's more coming. They've got a big recruiting weekend coming up. So, like I said, can you feel it? Can you feel that vibe? I know you can't come out to practice. I'm doing my best. I'm going to tell you about it. If you like what you're hearing, you like the show, I know you do. That's why you're here every day. If you're not an everydayer, you need to be one. If you're watching on YouTube, become a subscriber. It's quick. It's easy. Free. Click the red subscribe button. Smash that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the bell notification button. And all of you listening on your favorite podcast po uh, platforms, it's free. Don't forget that. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Yeah. Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you, when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this. Now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30. Get started at Robinhood.com forward slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 is validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk and includes, includes a loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. 
Robinhood Financial LLC, a member of the SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV 20, all day long, 24 hours a day? You have to turn the volume down with all the shouting? Make the switch to Lock on Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Lock on Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, let me get this going for you so you can understand exactly uh, where I'm going with this. Let's see if we can... Uh... There we go. Technical difficulties here. We'll get it going. So as I'm talking, you get to watch some uh, some practice highlights from Thursday's eighth spring practice. Remember, they get 15. The 15th is the Trojan huddle, the spring huddle. So, you know, I should be at the point where I'm not phased by the size of the players when they come out for practice. But I still am. <laughs> you know, these guys, they put on their pads and they were full padded on Thursday. Um, you, you look at these and you're like, man, Benny Wiley, that nutrition program from Rachel Suba that they put together, they're pulling their weight. And you know who else is pulling their weight? Some of the freshmen. I see guys like Cameron Fountain, Jade Abasiri, Lorenzo Cowan. They're freshmen, but they look like they're second-year players. I literally, my jaw dropped sometimes. I was like, whoa, look at those guys. You'll say, you'll have the same impression when you see them up close. You know, players like, all right, Emmanuel Prignon, offensive lineman. He's, uh, I think this is his third year, fourth year of college. Um, Amos Talalele, this is his second year. Well, when they come up from the McKay Center, you know, they they kind of eclipse the McKay Tunnel. I mean, as they the closer they get to that Trojan sword, you can't see the tunnel behind them. And so here's the thing. The difference in body size between them, it's negligible. That's crazy. And, and I, I, I'd like to talk about the offensive linemen and their size because basically what's happening over in their position room in the, in the group when they're working out at practice, it's just a giant mystery box. I don't get to see anything until we all see them line up on April 20th for the spring huddle. Um, after practice, we uh, got to speak with linebacker coach Matt Entz. Uh, this is what he said. Gentry's atypical. He's got rush value. He's big in zones. When we're playing just a big zone defense, his arms go from the hash mark to the numbers. <laughs> He's just a big body out there. I think we're going to continue to find other sub packages because he's twitchy too. He's not just a big long kid. He runs well. He understands football. Asks some tremendous questions in meetings. Always trying to get better. So I know I'm stating the obvious. Gentry is long. He can do some different things in the scheme. That's what Coach Entz was trying to emphasize. But, you know, Eric Gentry also spoke after practice um, about the new defense. Listen carefully. These words, words matter. Quote, it's not complicated. I'm feeling good about it. It's not a lot of overthinking or nothing I've got to do. Just play football. It gets better. They know what to do. Know where to put me. And then making me feel comfortable where I'm at. It feels good to have people who know what to do with me. Gentry also said, everywhere with it. So far this spring, boundary field, pass rush, other places. It's feeling good, really. He's talking about... they. They kind of have them playing all sorts of different roles in the defense right now. But look, I mean, nobody described USC's defense this way these last two seasons. And that last paragraph, wow. 
that I mean that just spoke volumes. <clears throat> you know, Thursdays are all about defense. Um, Tuesdays we talk with the offensive players, offensive assistant coaches, Lincoln Riley sometimes. We didn't have them on Tuesday. We spoke with Lincoln Riley on Thursday, along with Matt Entz. So that's why Thursdays we, we typically I focus on the defense mostly. And that's also what the media mostly gets to see. So, you know, it kind of helps. <laughs> uh, something else that uh, Coach Matt Entz spoke about after practice was his adjustment to being a, a position coach, even though he still has that head coach mindset. Um, he, he said there are times where that, you know, he can still, he still interjects, you know, he, he has full reign to, you know, kind of step up and speak when he needs to using that head coach mindset. But he also said there's times where he can just kind of stand there, you know, smile on his face, stand back and say, you know what, that's a head coaching issue. I don't have to deal with that anymore. And he smiled about it and we knew exactly what he was talking about, you know, there are certain things that a position coach deals with. There are certain things that the head coach has to deal with. I have a feeling that Coach Entz is enjoying his sabbatical uh, from being the having to deal with some of the head coaching responsibilities. And you know what else I like about Coach Entz? He sounds like a linebacker when he talks. He has the best gravel voice. I mean, he just sounds like a defensive dude. But since Ed Orgeron, Ed Orgeron was roaming USC sidelines. And I, I, like I mentioned, because he has that, that um, experience being a head coach, Lincoln Riley and the other coaching staff, guys on the coaching staff, they're not afraid to lean on him and ask him for advice. So again, big benefit to USC. I, I told you why he came to USC. I just want to remind people who aren't my everyday listeners and viewers. Matt Entz was a national champion head coach at North Dakota State. He wants to be a head coach at the FBS level. And he was told, he said, look, you don't have enough, you don't have the experience at this level. He is literally subjugating himself. He stepped down from being a national championship head coach to be a position coach so he can see what it's like to coach at the FBS level at a school like USC. USC needs to hold on to him for as long as he can, as long as they can, because I'm telling you, by the end of three years, he's gonna have a he's gonna have a head coaching job somewhere. Who knows? Maybe he'll be at USC one day. At least he's got his foot in the door here. As far as practice, um, you know, again, we're we're limited with what we get to see, as you can as you're watching some of this video here. Um, guys running around. I think the video already ended. It did. You might have saw the uh, defensive linemen in the background there. You'll notice they were kind of working their way across the blocking sled, and it was one player at a time. And what they would do is they would explode first into one of the four padded, um, I guess we'll call them robots. I don't know. What's the right term to call it? There's four positions on the blocking sled. So the first position, they explode into it. They lift it up by the shoulder shake it around a little bit like a rag doll, toss to the side, move to the right, wash, rinse, repeat. You do this two, three, four more times, and then you get back in line. So again, it's all about technique. It's all about getting low, getting that leverage, exploding, using some violent hands, and then moving on down the line, getting to the next guy. Uh, one of the uh, recruits that was, uh, well, he's not even a recruit anymore. I should back up. So class of 2024, cornerback Isaiah Rubin, he was hanging out watching practice. And although while he can't work out with his guys right now, he's still at he's still enrolled at Los Alamitos High School. Um, so he can't practice. But what he can do is hang out with the uh cornerback group, his position coach, Doug Bell. So when those guys are going through their their group drills, he's getting a first first hand approach. This is what you're going to be doing when you come to USC. So he, along with, you know, Dijon Lee and LaRue Zamorona, um, they got to watch a really physical practice. And perfect timing for them because there was a really heavy emphasis, big time emphasis on form tackling. 
bending at the hips, getting their head to the side, using both arms to wrap up. Doug Delk, Taylor Mays, Dan Lynn, all the eyes were making sure they were doing it the right way. Another drill, I'm not sure, but it, it kind of looked like the, the cornerbacks were running like a three-man weave. Um, and I think what this drill was all about was learning how to flip their hips, turn, pace, that type of stuff. Uh, you probably saw it um, in, the, in the video there. Uh, let me get rid of this real quick so I can, uh, it was just me talking and not staring at dead film. There we go. Uh, defensive coordinator, Danton Lynn. He's a lefty. Yeah. And he throws a pretty nice deep ball. <laughs> he was uh, he was getting involved with the, I, I'll call it the deep ball drill. And he would basically have the guys start backpedaling, move the ball one direction, have the guys react. And then the second reaction, you had to turn and burn. And Coach Lynn is throwing it deep. You better catch the ball in the end zone, that's all I'm going to say. Especially when your position coach is throwing the ball. I didn't notice anybody drop it. One thing is very clear. Lynn's arm strength does not compare to Caleb Williams. I think the furthest uh, Lynn could probably throw it, 40 yards. It's okay. He's not quarterback. He's USC's defensive coordinator. As I mentioned, when he's throwing the passes, you better make the catch. I didn't see anybody drop any. I saw a bunch of guys um, doing some toe taps at the back of the end zone, making sure they got both feet in, so they're getting some good NFL practice in, and catching the ball with their hands, most important. Full cr uh, crew of referees were also at practice on Thursday. Funny little moment. One of them was trying to get into practice, and uh, <laughs> I know this doesn't sound right, but it's more of a visual but the, the gatekeeper who lets people in, he's like, um, can you prove it that you're one of the referees? And so all of a sudden she kind of just slowly starts unzipping her jacket until she shows her referee shirt. It was the way she was unzipping it, and the guy's eyes were kind of like, and my eyes were like, what's going on here? So again, funny little moment. Referees were there helping out the team, getting ready for uh, making sure that they're doing things the right way. All right, so there it is. They're done with eight practices. They'll be back again on Saturday. Get some more scrimmage type of environment going. We'll talk to Lincoln Riley, Lincoln Riley, via Zoom after practice. We'll find out what's going on. By the way, um, because Coach Ince talked about it, I'll bring it up real quickly. Ray John Davis. Um, he's the guy's got some really bad luck. He's he's working with the team. He's limited, but he can't do any contact type of stuff. He had hurt one hand. And when he was trying to protect that hand, he went to brace his other, when he was falling to the ground, he used his other hand to brace himself. He hurt his other hand. So he's practicing with two taped up hands. He'll be fine. What is affecting him the most is in the weight room. He, he can't get that upper body strength. So we're all rooting for him, including Coach Ants. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views for your seat, and the best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show you your total up front, so you know exactly what you're getting. It's a great deal, and you're going to know that deal before you check out. And you can buy your tickets in a matter of seconds. It takes you two taps, and you're done. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E, D like David, O-N like Nancy, for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, 
my my Friday rant is going to take a minute to get warmed up. It's official. Eric Musselman is USC's new men's basketball head coach. Jen Cohn didn't waste much time. She went out and she found someone from a power conference, the SEC, and someone who wants to be USC's basketball coach. This is the statement that um, USC's athletic director, Jen Cohn, released. I am beyond excited to welcome Eric, Danielle, that's his wife, and their incredible family to USC. We were determined to find the best coach to champion the development of our student athletes and elevate our men's basketball program. His track, his track record of building winning programs and his unwavering commitment to a culture of excellence make him the perfect fit for USC. Eric displays heart, boldness, resiliency, and everything that it means to be a Trojan. He inspires togetherness and will help build and grow the program's connectivity within the Trojan community. As we move to the Big Ten and enter a new chapter for USC men's basketball, there is no better fit than Eric Musselman to launch our program to new heights. Sincerely, USC Athletic Director Jen Cohen. Coach Musselman will be introduced to the media Friday morning, 10 a.m. West Coast time. This is what he had to say in his prepared statement. My family and I couldn't be more excited for this incredible opportunity at USC. I am grateful to President Folt and Jen Cohen for the chance to lead the men's bas basketball program at such a world-class university with a rich tradition of success. We'll, we will be committed to the development of our student athletes and upholding the values that we make the Trojan family so special. We will hit the ground running and work tirelessly to make our great alumni, fans, and all of Los Angeles proud, close quote. He is going to need to start building that roster as quickly as possible. I hope he has his running shoes on. Right now, uh, the three commitment class that USC had, they reopened their, their, uh, their recruitment. I don't know if they're willing to come back. Eric Musselman, he's going he's gonna, to, he's got his work cut out for him. Look, if Bronny James does decide to come back, I'm going to say it again. He needs to be his own guy. Tell dad to stay home. Um, I, I And I think we'll have an idea soon of what's going to happen with Bronny James specifically. He has a former teammate uh, from Sierra Canyon uh, who was actually committed in Arkansas's 2024 class. Last name is Elohim. Really good player. I, power forward, small forward. Uh, Front court player. We're going to see if he wants to. If we're going to see if he did he commit to Eric Musselman or did he commit to Arkansas? <coughs> I have a feeling he committed to Eric Musselman. Uh, he already got his first transfer. Uh, he's a center from Massachusetts uh, named Josh Cohen. So we've got our center, USC fans. Here's the thing can he get. USC's best recruit in the class, Trent Perry, to re-engage and come back to USC. They're going to need a point guard. And he also just won the three-point shooting contest in the McDonald's All-American uh, contest. Same thing applies for Brady Kozlowski, who decommitted. Um, Liam Campbell, he's the other one. Got to get those guys back in the fold. So there it is. The Eric Musselman era, it's underway. Good luck. I'll keep you guys updated with the basketball program. But it's time to get into the ranty part of my Friday ring. USC has their new head basketball coach. And you know what's funny? All of a sudden, all these long-lost basketball fans are crawling out of the woodwork with all their faux excitement. Look, I get that everyone likes new things. Ooh, what's going on? Let me see what's going on over there. Where in the hell were you guys when USC was winning and going to the tournament these last 10 years? I know they haven't won a conference championship, but USC basketball has been winning these last 11 years during uh, Andy Enfield when he was running the program. Where were you? You know, Let me know when you start showing up to the games that LeBron isn't scheduled to walk in during the national anthem. 
you know, he was LeBron was good for an extra 3,000 fans per game. I don't need USC's fan base to be artificially generated. Be there because you want to be there and watch the product, not because you want to see LeBron James walk across the court. I mean, all this enthusiasm on the WeRSC.com message board, it, I literally had to lash out a little bit. I was, I was like, you know what? The game threads have been a ghost town. No one goes to the games. And now, all of a sudden, you're excited? Please. I don't know. Look, USC's in a big boy conference now. I hope the fans show up. Because if they don't, the Big Ten Conference fans, they'll be filling up the Galen Center. And USC basketball fans who show up to you when USC hosts Arizona, you know what it's like to have a home a home court advantage when Arizona has a home court in LA? We cannot let that type of thing metastasize in the Big Ten Conference. And, oh, Kobe Johnson, WTF. Bro, I get it. You jumped in the transfer portal, but UCLA, really? Look, I'm not sure why, but I, for me, it just hits differently when a basketball player swaps their cardinal and gold for the baby blue. It, it's more personal. In football, you got what 85? You got an 85 man scholarship roster. Basketball. 12 scholarships, right? It's different. I spoke to someone um, who's attached to the basketball program, very attached to the basketball program. And this person agrees. At some point during the season, season something changed with Kobe. Uh, and it was just, it wasn't just him. It was something with him and it was the team. But it confirmed my theory that there was just, it was, there was a fractured locker room this year. Injuries played a, a small role, but there was just too much NIL in the air. Look, I guess if anything interesting happens, I'll keep you updated. But this whole, all of a sudden, we're, you know, fans are jumping on the basketball bandwagon. Make sure you save this energy. Make sure you're showing up with this energy when the team's ready to play. Because right now, you don't have a roster. You got you to gotta name head coach. We'll see what happens from here on out. But I'm getting a little frustrated with USC fans. The fake USC fans. One of the last things Andy Anfield said before he left USC's press conference at Galen Center. He, you know, he's like, he was like, we'll, we'll see who the real USC fans are. That was something that bothered him a lot. He's going to enjoy himself at the ACC, in the ACC conference, even with SMU. They love basketball in the ACC. So, all right, that's it. Show's over. I'll be back with another episode next week. I'll be back with another five episodes. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.